local all morning. The Fox 61 Morning News starts now. And right now at 6 o'clock, the search continues for a child who has been missing now for more than a week. We'll tell you what you can do to help find him. And it is Inauguration Day here in Connecticut. We're going to have a look ahead at the festivities planned and what this year's legislative session could hold. Also, drama unfolding in the U.S. House of Representatives. Three votes taken, still no Speaker of the House. We'll tell you what's expected to happen this afternoon. Good morning. Thanks so much for being with us here at Fox 61 mm -hmm. at 6 a.m. I'm Eric Arias. And I'm Tim Lammers. Good morning to you. First things first, we just want to mention Salem Public Schools mm -hmm. are actually closed today because of low water pressure right now. Please keep that in mind. There's also a, uh, a notice about that up on the uh, Salem Public Schools website, too, in case you need more information. But again, Salem Public Schools, no school water yeah. pressure problems. I'm sure kids there are pretty happy about that. <laughs> Probably, Parents, yes. maybe not so much, yeah. having to scramble, but you know what? Hey, and the kids get next day. All right, we're turning to the forecast now this morning, taking mm -hmm. a live look out there, checking out the view of New Haven. We've had a mild few days, and I think this is going to be the most mild, yes. right? This uh, could possibly be record-breaking. Absolutely. Uh, we, we may have a run at that. We're going to keep an eye on that. Good morning. By the way, uh, what are you supposed to do when you, when you, uh, when you want a snowstorm? Kids go to bed, and they wear their pajamas inside out. What do you do for, for low water pressure? Is there any? any, any Same thing. Baseball <laughs> hat backwards. Do you try that every night? Yeah, okay, that good. old rally cap. I, I don't remember. I grew up in Florida. We didn't have to worry about mm -hmm. snow, so I yeah. don't know. Good morning, everybody. Nice to have you along. Uh, let's talk about what you need. As Erica said, it's very mild out there. Temperatures uh, making a run at some warm things. If we get 61, that is a record. Uh, let's take a look at what you need to know. It is a bit of a foggy start, seeing visibility issues in some parts of the state. Dry now, but rain returns later on tonight in the seven day. We're going to talk about uh, from the warmth to a bit of a reality check. And boy, look at these numbers now. Out of the gate, 55 degrees in Denver. It did not cool off over overnight. You didn't think it would. Kind of leveled off early yesterday afternoon in Hartford at 41. That's where the numbers stayed. That's where they are now. 45 in New Haven, 48 in Groton. Take a look at the cloud and radar picture. Some low clouds out there, but other than that, nothing of significance. Now, we will get another batch of rain. Nothing like what they're getting down south over at Atlanta this morning. Some strong thunderstorms. Same line that went through parts of um, Louisiana, Arkansas, Mississippi, the Tennessee Valley yesterday. This time, well, that's marched east Here's the bus stop forecast for the high schoolers. It's dry now and dry later. By dinner time, if you've got a late afternoon practice, uh, you know, it might be rain at, at the tail end of it. We're not overly concerned with it. But look at the numbers again. Fairly mild out there. Should be in the upper 30s for your highs. Higher, higher. We'll talk about lower. We'll talk about some uh, cold air coming in. When? The answer coming up in a few minutes. Let's talk traffic right now. There's my uh, my co-potato head over there on the other end of the <laughs> studio. There's Rachel Piscatelli. Good morning. Hey, good morning, Matt. So we are following one issue out on the roadways that has been out there since about 4 o'clock this morning involving one vehicle on 91. Let's get you right out to the map so you can show you what we're talking about here. Again, this is going to be on 91, that southbound side, just out by exit 40. We have several lanes blocked at the moment, about three lanes or so. This is involving one vehicle, again, um, and this in involving a vehicle vehicle and into a fire truck. We'll have much more on that coming up in just a bit. All right, looking at Bridgeport this morning, in terms of your drives, it's looking pretty good in both directions. That being said, there is some reduced visibility in spots that may impact your travels. New Haven looks good too in both directions on 91 and 95 out by Long Wharf. Bridgeport to Fairfield, you're looking at seven minutes with delays building in the area due to reduced visibility, I would imagine. Darien to Westport, it's seven minutes in trouble to Westport on the Merritt Parkway. You're looking at a smooth 11 minute drive. Tim, Erica, back to you. All right, Rachel, thanks so much. We are following some breaking news this morning coming out of Windsor Locks. The right three lanes of I-91 South are closed right now after state police say a car hit a fire truck that was parked on the highway. Now, this all happened just after 4 a.m. near exit 40. The fire truck was at the scene of an unrelated crash at the time. At least one person was taken to the hospital. No word, though, on how serious those injuries are. We do have a crew heading there to the scene, and we'll get you more information as soon as we get it back into the newsroom. You can see right there the front left side of engine four, though, heavy damage there. We got more breaking news for you this morning. Please take a look at your screen. We're going to show you a picture of seven year old Taylor Funye. They said he ran away from his home in Hartford. He's about four feet, eight inches tall and weighs 85 pounds. He's got black hair and brown eyes. 
Working to get more details, though, about where police think he might be at this point. All they've said at this point, though, is that uh, if you think you know where Taylor is or if you think you've seen him, please call the Hartford Police. On 6.05 this morning, and today is Inauguration Day here in Connecticut. Elected officials are going to be sworn in to serve in office. And those top-ranking officials will be in Hartford taking their oaths this morning and this afternoon. Fox 61's Lindsay Kane is live at the Armory right now with more on those details. Lindsay, good morning. Hi, good morning. Well, it certainly looks like Inauguration Day here inside the Armory. The stage is set literally for today's inaugural events. Governor Ned Lamont and Lieutenant Governor Susan Beisowitz will be sworn in for their second term in office alongside other top ranking officials today. But first up is Lieutenant Governor Susan Beisowitz. She'll be sworn in around 10 o'clock this morning in front of the Senate. And then around noon, the inaugural ceremony is here inside the Armory. That's when Governor Lamont will take his oath and then he'll make his state of the state address around 1 o'clock this afternoon. Now, later tonight, the inaugural ball is being held at the Bushnell, which is a tradition dating back to colonial times. During the inaugural ceremony, Attorney General William Tong, Secretary of the State-elect Stephanie Thomas, and Treasurer-elect Eric Russell will also be sworn into office. Although this isn't Governor Lamont's first inauguration day, it looks much different than his first back in 2019. The governor is taking office in a much stronger position than four years ago. He's more popular, winning in November by a larger margin than in 2018 and securing higher approval ratings. The governor also has a Democrat-held state legislator behind him, which will help him get his legislative agenda passed, an agenda that Sacred Heart professor Gary Rowe says should be an easy path forward, but there's speculation it could be his last. I seriously doubt that he's going to run a third term. And so I think he wants to probably do some really big creative things um, within the next four years. Ned Lamont now, I think, is going to feel in many ways almost unrestrained. In his speech today, he'll outline his agenda that will likely be focused on tax reform, infrastructure improvements, and fiscal security. Now, again, today's first inaugural event is set to happen at 10 o'clock this morning, and then the inaugural ceremony here at the Armory at noon is open to the public, and there are no tickets needed for that. So we'll continue to keep you updated on today's events on air, online, and on Fox 61 Plus as well. Live in Hartford this morning, Lindsay Kane, Fox 61 News. Hi, Lindsay, thank you. And of course, state lawmakers are also returning to the state capitol this morning for the start of a new legislative session. And Fox 61's Angelo Bavaro is at the capitol in Hartford this morning with more on the big issues on the agenda that could affect all of us. Angelo, good morning. Erica, Tim, good morning. And we can expect that lawmakers will continue those conversations around those big issues that took focus during last year's session, things like tax cuts and the economy as well as gun reform and other issues that are also expected to get some attention during this year's session. Those would include things like health care, rising energy prices, as well as affordable housing. Now, both chambers, the House and the Senate, they are still very much a deep shade of blue heading into this new session as Democrats held on to large majorities during November's election. Among the big responsibilities this year for lawmakers is approving a new two-year state budget. And that work comes as Connecticut is sitting on an historic surplus, which means you can expect lots of debate about which programs and services to fund, as well as potential tax cuts. I know the governor has talked about providing some uh, middle class uh, tax relief by perhaps changing some of the rate structure on the state income tax. Um, we're certainly going to consider that. One of the things we'd also like to consider is um, expanding our the uh, or making sure that we continue the state child tax credit. When you have a government that has a budget that is taking in more revenue than it needs and still meeting and we had a plan putting forward that would still meet all the obligations with regards to pension and debt. Uh, we need to start looking at how can we help Connecticut families. And also new this year, the Capitol building is fully open to the public for the first time since the start of the COVID-19 pandemic. Both chambers will gavel in separately a little later this morning to kick off this five-month session. That will wrap up on June 7th. We are live at the State Capitol this morning. I'm Angelo Bavara, Fox 61 News. Certainly a big day at the Capitol. Angelo, thank you.
Well, today, the man accused of killing his ex-girlfriend with an axe is expected to appear again in court. 42-year-old Ewan DeWitt is accused of killing 40-year-old Julie Minogue earlier this month while her two kids were in her home. Police said DeWitt repeatedly violated Minogue's protective and restraining orders against him. Last month, Minogue had told officers that she was worried he would kill her. And at 610, we have an update for a deadly rollover crash in Middletown. Police say Vance Jenkins, a 33-year-old man, was unresponsive and pronounced dead there on the scene. His car hit the concrete barrier in the median and went across the roadway and shoulder, hitting a light pole and rolling onto its roof. Now, this all happened just after 3, Tuesday afternoon on Route 9 South near exit 11. Police also found a gun in the car during the investigation. Route 9 was shut down for several hours yesterday evening between exits 11 and 12 as investigators stayed there at the scene.